Hi folks. <clears throat> Hi Raj, out in California. Hope all is well with you. Brother Raj, he's always encouraging. Uh, <clears throat> I went through my videos and I realized I have not shared something on uh, Samaria, the sin of Samaria, about the first part of the year of 2000, of 2000, no, that'll be 2020. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing my mind. I kept asking the Lord, what am I missing? Uh, what is going on with the church? What, where's my life? I was still searching to see what I needed to correct and what I needed to grow with. And uh, the word that I got from him was, uh, was just a still, gentle, soft voice that talked about, uh, there's a famine of my word. There's a famine of my word. And boy, was I confused. I thought, look at all the radio stations, all the people, all the churches, all the worldwide organizations that are sharing your word. See, there it is, that presupposition, his word. We're thinking it's sharing his word. And I, so what I did was I looked up this Samaria, the sin of Samaria, and did some research on this. And this paper here is about two and a half years old. But it helps me to understand, in correlation with Paul, why the doctrine is so important, why the issues that Paul teaches and what Jesus teaches is so important to see the division between them, okay? <clears throat> this is in Amos 8, 11 through 14. The sin of Samaria refers to a name, Asham, a Canaanite mother goddess. This Asham represents the important importance of foreign cults and gods. Historically, Israel borrowed gods from the surrounding nations and combined them, combined their worship with that of the true Yahweh, true God. This is the important part, people. By changing the nature of God, they destroyed the right image of the true God, Yahweh. This in turn changed the source of beliefs, ideas, laws, standards, ethics, and morality. Thus, when a famine of Yahweh's word comes, immorality swiftly sets in. And so when you're looking at the doctrines of Paul and the Old Testament and that of Jesus and his disciples and stuff, we can argue doctrine all the time, but are you changing the character of who the Father really is? See, Yahweh wanted to make himself known to us, to his people. But like they said here, they borrowed other gods, they borrowed other things. Paul took and borrowed a lot of different things, a lot of different teachings, and he took and incorporated in. He took everything that Jesus said and maybe took it a quarter of a turn. He changed the atonement of the whole purpose of the cross. He changed the desires of what the Father wanted, of what the Father expects. He completely made what I say got into a Santa Claus. Jesus did it all for us. The imputed righteousness. All these different things, people, were changing the character of who he is. And way, way back then, I had no clue what I was heading into coming down the line to understanding and seeing that his word the Old Testament, and Jesus' words, the Son of God, and how there's a difference in the Bible that we took, Paul took, the church took, everybody called it all across the board, God's Word. Now listen to this. In Dan was the location of one of the sanctuaries that Jeroboam number 1 set up to imitate the Temple of Jerusalem. That's 1 Kings 12, 29. His counterfeit sanctuary was made of a holy of holies. People get to where they don't know the difference between what's a true God and what's a false God. And that's what Paul's specialty is. Instead of cherubim, it had two golden calves arranged to and form the base of a counterfeit mercy seat. See, they're imitating. Paul's imitating everything just off. Over the years, the visible presence of the calves became familiar to the Israelites. 
who soon were worshiping the calves as God. That's what we're doing. We're, people are putting Paul's words as God's words now. And they don't, they don't drive with him. After more time, the nature of the calves became the nature of Yahweh. Every sermon and preacher that I hear that preaches Paul, they're changing the Father's character to match what Paul says it is and not what the Son says it is. People argue and defend Paul even when I share what Christ says. They overlook what Christ says. That's the scary part. That's the scary part. Hosea 8.6 For from Israel was it also the workmen made it. The workmen made it. Therefore it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. He's talking about the, the work. It's made of... Paul made this stuff up, guys. He says and claims he met Jesus on the road. But Jesus said, no, don't believe anyone who goes out in the wilderness. In Matthew 12 or whatever it is. And so... Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth, Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Jeremiah was talking about this. I just added this one here the other night. That's what made me think of it. Jeremiah 23, 13. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. These prophesied, they prophesied in Baal and caused my people to err. Paul is prophesying and causing causing, manipulating, influencing people to err from what Jesus was teaching. Does that make sense? The, the sin of Samaria is bringing in a false information to change who the Father in Heaven really is. That's the heart of it. We can bounce doctrine off and on, back and forth all we want, but if you and I don't know who He is, what He wants and what His standards are, we're going to face the consequences. If you're going to, if I'm going to follow Paul, matter of fact, I still find verses or even a few videos that I, I was supporting the, the certain things that Paul said. He did say some good things. A counterfeit knows the truth. And he also knows how to put in that truth, slip it in properly where people will accept it as truth, the lies. The sin of Samaria. Distorting the character of the Father. And since then, I have been standing up for the Lord. Who is standing up for the Father? We all defend Paul. We all defend different verses. We defend churches, and they call themselves Catholics and Lutherans and Pentecostals and all that. Do you care about what the Father thinks? Do you really care what the Father thinks? I'm going through some hard stuff right now, simply with family stuff, and parents and rest homes and all this here, different things, and heaven and hell is a very real thing right now to me. Where people stand right now and what the truth that they believe is very important. Because once they step off in eternity, it's, it's over. There's no more choices. There's no purgatory or any of this stuff. And so life to me is absolutely incredibly serious. And so I think you need to check it out. What is your view and understanding of the Father? Do you believe what the Son says or do you believe what Paul says? And see, this isn't one of those... Uh, uh, like a Torah situation where people argue over which way the name should say. Uh, they argue over which day should do the, you know, all, all the logistical part. They love being called legalistic. But how are they upholding the character of God? Is Torah people upholding the character of the living God? They're beating them over the head. You say, well, you're beating us over the head with Paul. I'm showing you the different right and wrong teaching. I'm supporting what Christ says. How can you knock me if I'm trying to follow Christ? You say, well, you're knocking Paul. I, so let's take Paul out of the picture. Shouldn't I just follow Christ anyway? Shouldn't we follow Christ? Why do we follow an interpretation of a Pharisee of what Christ taught? So this stuff doesn't make any sense to me. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing. I pray, I just pray for help. Lord, we need help real bad. Guide us and direct us in Yeshua's precious name. Amen.